friends, it's Lisa here from Arcane and Stellar. Welcome to my channel today. We are doing a reading on your person's current feelings and intentions. So we'll be looking at that. Hopefully this will bring you insight, especially if you're facing any confusion with a specific person. I do want to thank uh, the name I cannot re uh, recall because I forgot to write it down, but she knows who she is, um, or he, sorry, they know who they are. Uh, they requested this reading and I thought, yeah, I haven't done one in a while, so I'll definitely do it. So here's your, here's my promise to do it for you. And thank you for that suggestion and that reminder that I haven't done one in a while. So hopefully this brings insight. That's my prayer for this video, my request from spirit to offer insight for people who need it, um, regarding anyone that they want to know more about. Uh, so anyway, that's what I've got. And, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, go ahead and pick a pile. There's different decks, so we're going to be doing decks this time. So we have on group number one, uh, Snowflake Obsidian. On group number two, Citrine. Group number three, Lapidolite. And group number four, Tree Lace Agate. So, yeah, go with whatever your gut or intuition is calling for. Time stamps will be down below. So, let's go! Hey friends, if you've chosen group number one here with the Snowflake Obsidian and we have the Disney Villains deck, all the deck information is down below. So thank you for being here as we kind of look into this. I'm going to do a bit of a longer reading. I know a lot of people are fans of them. I always just assumed, because I guess I have like my Aries Stellium, so my Aries butt always thinks that everyone wants everything fast and quick and concise. Um, but I know that's not the case. A lot of you want deep dives and stuff like that, so we'll go ahead and go with it. So there's that snowflake obsidian. Let's set it over here and say a little prayer. Spirit guides, angels, ancestors, guide us in this reading for group number one so that they understand their person more. So their person's current feelings for them. What do we got? So let's find out. Current feelings of the person that's on group number one's mind. What are their current feelings towards them? Their person's current feelings. So we have a bit of a collaborative energy with three of coins. I find this to be quite a practical energy, usually. Um, it usually denotes like, ooh, okay. Trying to find a practical solution, wanting to figure out what's going on, wanting to find harmony. Wow, okay, this is interesting. So the Three of Pentacles, like I said, whenever it comes up with relationships and stuff like that, it talks about like that collaborative team effort, learning experiences. So I have a good feeling this person wants to get to the bottom of something, to find harmony within the connection, to find a sense of place. Um, for the both of you because we have temperance and that's a very beautiful card I think when it comes to feelings because they want harmony they want moderation they want understanding between the two of you with that seven of cups sometimes things can seem a little bit confusing a little bit uncertain maybe we don't always know what to do and I feel like this person that's on your mind they might be looking towards you to understand the truth they might be hoping that you'll say something to them that uh, somehow you might reveal some sort of knowledge that will help them understand which move to make uh, as well. So that's interesting. Let's keep going. Feelings of group number one's person towards them. What kind of feelings do they carry inside of their heart at this time? See, there we go. <laughs> Luck. What well, opportunities and joyful surprises are in store for you? What can you do to align yourself with the energies of luck? That's an interesting one. So in some way, they might look at you and feel like to get with you would just be luck in some way. That's funny with the seven of, of cups because that is like denoting fantasy sometimes. Imagine it, imaginative thinking. So if there are unrealistic aspects between the two of you, that might be something that's coming out here um, where maybe they are looking to you. I, I feel like for some of you, this person, for some of you at least, and, and take this if it resonates, don't bother if it doesn't, but it might be that this person looks to you for some sort of truth and they might be unaware of your feelings is what I want to say. Three of coins, too, can sometimes uh, talk about, like, work relationships, friendships, and stuff like that, like, kind of collaborative type of um, situations, although I see it often in marriages and stuff like that in relationships, but yeah. The right way, learning to create what you desire. Interesting. And impossible things. 
Holy smokes. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Impossible things. Working through disbelief, imaginative leaps, fresh perspective. Wow. So it does seem to your person like there are is some sort of impossibility here so maybe for some of you you're at a distance or something and it seems like unrealistic to come together in, in, in reality um, there might be other things that are kind of seemingly impossible even if you have a practical relationship or you see this person it might be that they feel like it would take a lot of work and effort in order to kind of create this into reality to come into some sort of union maybe perhaps for some of you they idolize you look at this luck and then I saw this crown and I want to say I feel like this person does have a lot of um, fantasies about who you could be or what you guys could be together, I want to say. But here it's like learning to create what you desire and that's so interesting because three of coins and the seven of cups together are like, how can we make this a reality? How can we make this like pipe dream a reality? How can we create something more between us? So I definitely seem to think that this person, it's like they feel like they want to create something with you, but I do feel like it has a little bit of an aura of uh, fantasy, to be honest. Darn it, I wanted to use this deck and now I can't, I don't know where the guidebook's at because I'm unorganized. Uh, okay, we won't be using that one. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can use it. Yeah, we'll use it. Who cares? Who even cares? Let's just do it. We'll go with our guts and our intuition with this. Of course, as a viewer, using your own intuition is important. Okay, there are person's feelings towards them. What do they need to know about this person? Bees. Interesting, because that three of coins, and then now we have three bees showing up, which I think of bees as industrious um, workers. Of course, for some of you, that might be... <coughs> Sorry. That might be... Um, showing that you guys have a work relationship or again that there might be more practical um, teamwork needed here in order to come together maybe they're feeling like they want to see effort on your part or they want to come together in some way um, or both of you are mutually helping the other oh darn I dropped that card that sucks because I can't get to it <laughs> hold on Okay, I can get to it, but it's just going to take some. Thank God I have long arms. Sylvia Plath, the dark. Interesting. Huh. Sylvia Plath. I am a fan of Sylvia. Oh, I was a fan of Sylvia Plath in my youth. I was kind of a dark teenager. <laughs> but the dark, and it says the dark. How funny. I feel like, looking at this imagery, that this person certainly has in an eye on you. And I do feel like this person feels rooted to you, like in the veins, like in the deep sense of, of the word. And I feel like that with temperance as well. It usually shows some sort of a bond, right? Because we have flotsam and jetsam and they're like always together, <laughs> essentially, right? And I, I do feel like this person feels some sort of uh, like connection, maybe like a, tw you know, not a twin, but like there is there is some sort of uh, vibe going. And uh, I do feel like this person feels rooted in you, but they also might feel rooted in other things. Sylvia Plath had some interesting ideas about, about the world, and she often, there's this one, and I have to talk about this, uh, I, I feel like I've mentioned this quite a lot in my readings, but probably, I don't know, but there's a scene in, in, the, in the bell jar where she's at the fig tree, and each fig on the tree re resembles something that she wants. And it reminds me a lot of the Seven of Cups. In fact, that's one of the stories that I use to denote the Seven of Cups. It's like where I always fall back on. It's like where she's at the base of the tree looking at the figs. And each fig represents this sort of beautiful outcome. You know, oh, this marriage with so-and-so. And then like so-and-so, like, uh, you know, she'd be like the Olympic sports person. And she would be the writer and the this and the that. And it's like as she can't make a choice or a decision, it all crumbles. You know, like everything falls down. It shrivels up. It dies and falls at her feet and none of the dreams are possible anymore and so it's interesting because I think that this person in the current energy that they're in it's like they're trying to figure out how to to make reality how to make choices how to make things happen it might feel like they're working against luck here for some of you like that they there's a certain amount of luck required here and for some of you I mean that might be that they're just lucky to have found you um, 
there's a song that comes to my mind right now I'm channeling. Um, Alison Cross, uh, she sang a song, Baby, now that I found you, I won't let you go. I built my world around you. I need you so. Even you don't need me. Uh, yeah, something like that. That song. Anyway, let's keep going. Tell me more about their feelings, their person's feelings. Tell me more. Tell me more. Bravery. Oh. So we have bravery here. And again, that might be... It's hard to take a lucky chance or be truthful with someone because it takes a lot of... Oh, no way. Luck came out again. Working on luck is very difficult because we never know, you know, what that could mean. It's like a take a lucky... It's like... Uh, it's hard to take a risk. It's like I was just reading this thing. It was by Errol Gatoga. I love him. And I posted on my Instagram story, shared it. But go check out his channel. And in the community section, he wrote something very amazing about how people are afraid to ask what they want. It's like uh, he said he once was in an audience and he said, who wants 50 bucks? And nobody raised their hand, even though there were probably people in the audience who could use it as an example. And a lot of people aren't, are afraid to take luck by the horns. Like they're afraid that it's not good. They're not good enough for it, that they won't somehow deserve it. Or um, so I think that this person's a little bit scared because it's like you're too lucky for them like this is too much of a luck thing it's like scary um how can i risk asking for that but i do feel like this person's feelings really are compassionate and affectionate towards you they care a lot about you i do feel but it, it's like they want to make they want to make some brave move um and they want to learn this and they want to figure it out and i feel like that's where your person's at in their feelings it's like they're trying to figure out how to make this shit work <laughs> essentially like how can i make this work how can i approach this person how can i uh, make something happen here um that sort of deal is kind of the vibe i'm getting overall um with your person so i would say that they're in a space of um compassion towards you of affection i think that they really do care about you and they're desiring to share some sort of truth i feel like for a lot of you this person hasn't been truthful in, in another way too by the way or they feel like you haven't been truthful with them it could go either way but we have the impossible things of seven of cups the truth card coming out so here seven of cups can be kind of illusionary a little bit right and then of course with impossible things it's like oh the bread butterflies <laughs> i love i love that from alice in wonderland i always thought they were the cutest things but no it it feels like it's just a child dream or they're they're trying to figure something out i really do feel that so let's see tell me more about group number one's person's feelings anything further turbulence the mind is murky in rough water waters and yeah, it, it, and it might be that you guys are currently going through some sort of turbulence. Oh my God, no way. Okay, hold up. Mm, okay, we've got three, four cards falling out. We have turbulence. So it says a mind is murky in rough waters. And oftentimes when things seem unstable, it's like only luck could make this happen. And this person might have a pessimistic outlook like this is too rough of a thing to start or I can't fix it or I can't get this done. Um, there's that, and, and again, the mind is murky, seven of cups, like they're confused. I feel like your person's feeling confused. And it says here, don't be lured by the siren song with prudence. Prudence is all about moderation and carefully going about something. So I feel like this person, they might be prudent in their advances towards you because they're not sure. It seems too good to be true perhaps, or they're not sure. And, and again, don't be lured by the siren song. The siren's like, you know, entrancing somebody and they might feel entranced by you, but it feels kind of bullshit or they're not sure. They're like, oh, no, this is too good to be true. I don't know about this. This seems like a siren <laughs> situation. It's funny, actually, one of the only songs I've written in my life, um, it was about a siren. Okay. Anyway, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> direction, trust your inner compass and find your bearings and then change. Know when to move to new shell, especially if you're no longer fits. And I think here we're talking about the fact that this person's feeling very much in their head about where things are headed here. I think that this person's trying to figure out what the direction is. And I think they're also looking to you to try to find that out as well. So this is interesting because it might be that your actions are somehow very relevant to this person in terms of how they're going to they're gonna approach you or how this is going to play out. Let me see. Let's, let's look a little bit further here. I'm going to clean up these cards real quick. And we're going to redraw and see more about perhaps a quick look at this person's um, perception of you. Okay, so for those that are watching group number one here, what is their person's perception of them? What's 
our perception. Oh, we have true love, lovers. What's our perception? They don't know. <laughs> That's funny, two of swords. Uncertain. You know, the other thing, <laughs> I think that they're uncertain. We have the two of swords here. And one thing I notice is that the swords are different as well. So I feel like they might be perceiving you as having different ideologies about the connection perhaps as well. We have that hero font, so it might be that you guys have different um, different moral beliefs or different uh, structure, structured beliefs as an example as well. So, But I think that they see you as like a romantic interest, certainly. Hmm. I mean, if that is possible, and it seems like a realistic, of course, I always want to encourage us to be realistic, you know what I mean, in these readings, that we don't try to fit something in there that it goes against what the person said, of course, or reality, you know, the basis of reality. So I'm always encouraging of that, but because um, I don't want to lead anyone astray and get them hurt, as an example. That's always my worst nightmare, that someone would get hurt in one of these readings by, you know, perhaps align themselves because sometimes these readings can be kind of um a little bit uh you know they're they're for general purposes and and they can talk and like resonate a lot but it won't be always everything every single thing is there for you you know what i mean but anyway the whole point here is i do think this person perceives you as a love interest but i don't think that they understand i think they might be questioning they might be of two minds about it they don't really know where you're at and that would make sense with the feelings being quite confused i don't know if this person is aware of what you're feeling so it could be that you've done things that contradict um love or affection or interest or desire okay so you could be ignoring them you might not be talking to them you might not be initiating conversations you might be hot and cold i mean there can be numerous ways in which this plays out so i mean keep that in mind as how they're perceiving you at the moment now in terms of their intentions why don't we go into that right now so what are group number one's person's current intentions towards them what is their person's current intentions towards them this is interesting the queen of coins and the empress and the ace of swords to strike up conversations, perhaps to communicate. So if you're out of contact, this could be indicating that this person is going to be intending to contact you at some point. Um, this person could express some sort of truth to you as well. Um, the cards preceding it are very positive, so I would say that these would be positive developments. For some of you, I think at the very worst, if by chance some of you are interested in somebody who is married or already in a like long-term partnerships or connection, um, I will say that this person could tell you some sort of truth about that. They might choose their spouse over you, and I'm not. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. If that is the case, because I did notice that hero font coming out before, um, in terms of how they perceive you. So if like either of you is in a connection, it might be that they cut it off. As an example, um, to let you be married or them be married or something like that. I'm I'm not going to lie about that. That could be an intention. Now, for some of you, this person, I think for a good majority of you, because I feel like that would be. Um, probably a rare circumstance here in this reading, but I could see this person expressing something to you. Is, is the Empress and the Ace of Swords too, is this person might want to make it known that they find you beautiful, um, that they find you valuable, and this is interesting. So we have such a curious dream, grounding, returning to reality, and coming home. So that's interesting because I do think that they intend to take a realistic approach towards this so this might be about speaking about the realities of the connection, um, what's possible, what's not possible. Um, this might be about expanding on the idea of the dream of the relationship that they might be reaching out to let you know how they feel or how can we make this real like how can we go forward that sort of thing we also have mortality which is an interesting card life is brief bright beautiful and yours to live so that makes me feel like they're more inclined to take a chance towards you than anything and I think this person could be working up that courage as an example. Um, it might be that they are spurred by something that scares them 
to act on those feelings. Oftentimes when people are faced with mortality in their life or around them, they maybe it's something that just strikes them suddenly. You know, they're watching television or something and they see like how life has gone like that. Or, you know, there's sobering things around us always in life. And it could be that this person fa is facing sobering reality. Even the mortality of the connection as an example, if you are in separation, it's like if I don't speak up, this is going to be gone forever. And I will miss out on my opportunity. So I could really see for a lot of you this person trying to follow reality. And again, I think for some of you this is going to indicate that they're contacting you, especially to break a separation. Because again, it might be at that point where this is teetering off the edge. Like it's about like almost dead as an example. And they might revive it. Uh, or intend to revive it, to be honest. That's what I'm, I think for, for those of you in that situation, that's a good chance. We have died. You don't find pearls on the seashore. And what else do we have here? Doo -doo -doo -doo. And dive, you know, you don't find pearls on the seashore. So it might be that they're really trying to dig towards the truth as well. You know what I mean? And we have turbulence. The so mind is murky in rough, wa rough waters. Um, so diving through the difficulties as an example, especially if you've had a turbulent relationship and stuff like that, they might be trying to kind of dig in deeper. And we have recharge. There's nothing like a walk on the beach to soothe your soul. I think that this might be indicating for some of you, especially with dive and recharge, that this person is still going to take their time coming towards you as an example. It might be that there has to be some sort of turbulence for them to come back or come forward in some way as well. And that might be a different timeline for all of you. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna speculate on the time frames here on to when this could happen or when you could expect something. I think it's gonna be different for each and every one of you. Like for some of you, they might reach out tonight or tomorrow or next week. I don't feel anything about time frame other than I do see conversation initiated. I do feel like truth being told. And I do feel like the end of separation for some of you as well. Um, again, it might be that they just need time to take on their own as well, especially if you've been fighting with this person or something like that. For those of you that have been in kind of a turbulent situation where things have been up and down or kind of confusing, choppy, unfriendly, I would say that they need to recharge and then they'll be back. <laughs> you know, that sort of deal. And uh, let me see. I want to get one more card here. Anything further to note, Spirit, before we sign off from this reading? Anything further? Darn it! Those totally flew across the room. Well, we had spider and mountain goat. Unfortunately, I am absolutely not going to be grabbing those because they're too far away. <laughs> but I will tell you what they mean. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's just go ahead. And grab. You'll just have to believe me that that's what I see on the floor. <laughs> but I'm not about to get up and, and go find those. So, here. Hmm... In, attempt to, in attempting to write, you may find yourself easily distracted, either with others' needs for your time and attention, or with those negative thoughts and beliefs that are the product of judgments and shame that you were subjected to during childhood. A powerful way to release these habitual and self-limiting thoughts and feelings is to write about them in a story form. As you do so, don't hold anything back. Through such a catharsis, you're, you heal those words that originally wounded you. Interesting. And this is all about creativity, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. I said it twice, three times already. <laughs> Weaving, balance, storytelling, writing, connectedness. And again, I think that means that this compli complicated situation especially, um, it could be an intricate situation that you're dealing with. But this is about um, writing as an example. So again, I think that you could find that this person will reach out to you as well. That could be definitely confirming that idea. And the mountain goat, there's something out of balance in your life, so do whatever you need to do to correct it. Now, of course, when I think of the mountain goat, I think a bit of Capricorn, right? So for some of you, maybe that's a sign. But um, yeah, it's unrealistic to expect your life to stay completely in balance at all times as it's con a continuous interplay between the various polarities. Even the seasonal adjustments of light and dark slowly and gradually shift in a ceaseless dance. Notice how you feel when something's out of balance, and then take the necessary steps to adjust it in ways that provide greater equilibrium. And this is all about sturdiness, sure-footedness, resiliency, determination, quickness, confidence, aspiration, ambition, independence, strength, practicality, stability, dignity, and perseverance. And I think that this person is 
it says here that you can take time out, you know, like to take some time to con assess and stuff like that. And I think that could be the that what this person is doing right now. They're trying to figure out the tangled web in which you weave, that sort of deal. And uh, I would say that um, that's where they're at right now. But I do feel like this person would initiate some sort of contact in the near future. Or you could expe expect some sort of uh, expression of appreciation as well for those of you that, you know, are you know already in contact with this person maybe no difficulty i would say that there's an expression of affection as well perhaps of maybe of your beauty of uh like complementary energy i think so anyway that's what i'm seeing for those of you that chose group number one i hope this was helpful let me know in the comments below what you thought tell me if you chose number one any kind of comment you can leave is always really really helpful for the engagement of the channel so i appreciate it but anyways i'm sending you guys lots of blessings and love take care and i'll see you next time Hey friends, so here you've chosen group number two here with the citrine. This is your reading. So let's see, I'm gonna cleanse the area. We're gonna be live shuffling today. These are pretty detailed. Hopefully this is gonna provide you guys with a lot of insight. I'm gonna try to go deep dive in here. So relax, sit down, take a break. <laughs> let's find out. Spirit guides, angels, ancestors, guide me in this reading for group number two. Those that are drawn to this particular group, let's give them some insight about their connection. The connection that's on their heart and soul. So, how does their person currently feel about them? Energy check-in. How does a person on group number two's mind feel about them? Three of Wands. I would say optimistic interested, engaged. Oh, cute. <laughs> so we have the three of wands, the queen of wands, and the page of cups. So of course there could be an age gap here. It could be that this person feels like you're collaborating in some way, if that makes sense. Of course, like I say, always take these readings and make them make sense to your current connection. You know what I mean? But these are quite positive feelings. I would say that there's um, hopefulness. There's expectation of, of, of positivity towards the future. I think that this person could think about traveling to see you, visiting, that sort of thing. But either way, it, it, it denotes that there's optimism and warm feelings I want to say so very different vibe that we're getting here already from group number one so we have victory and victimhood ooh interesting so here it says let's read victimhood it says how are you blaming the world for what has happened to you how have you given up your own agency and power alternatively what painful experiences do you need to fully acknowledge in order to heal shadow work well, of course, that could be indicating that somehow this person struggles with some shadow work when it comes to you. Maybe they have feelings of inadequacy or victimhood. Can you elaborate a little bit more on this victimhood card? The Queen of Swords. And the Ace of Cups. Oh. Well, for some of you... There could be that encouragement. I wonder if some of you have helped this person through something, like giving them advice, loving, um, loving um, feelings, affectionate feelings um, that they might appreciate here. There is a sense of uh, something along those lines. So I have to think that a lot of you may have connected to this person emotionally and shared perhaps, like I said, support or something like that towards them. I would say it's it's well appreciated, perhaps as well. I think this person is looking to move out of a victimhood mentality as well. So if this person previously had relationships in which they were a victim, I think that, that they're looking towards having a more open relationship where they're not acting on shadow. Um, victory. What validates you, affirms you, and establishes you, what makes you a winner, and how do you become victorious? Again, this person might be thinking about how to win your heart, how to be victorious. This person could face self-confidence issues with victimhood, maybe wondering whether they're strong enough or something like that. I do see a page and a queen here, which could indicate uh, this person looking at you as perhaps a bit above them in some way. Sometimes that can be an age gap. Sometimes that's just like them and um, putting a lot of 
um, faith in you as being more advanced than them in some way or more mature or something along those lines. Let's see what else we've got. Tell me more about group member two's person's feelings for them. What kind of feelings? Lead the way. Be a leader. Show others how it's done. You can help others. Again, this person might want to direct you in some way. <laughs> or vice versa. They feel like you've given them a sense of direction as well. Or, let's see. Let me just set this down. Yeah, so it says lead the way. Be a leader. Show others how it's done. You can help others. They might see you as a very giving, generous soul that um, does kind of have leadership qual qualities, Victoria, like victory type of qualities. Like I said with that Queen of Wands, of course, she's very much a leader, um, you know, and the type to go be a go-getter as an example. And we also belong to your own dream, create your own life. This is very interesting because I see victimhood is when you say I don't have power and I can't do anything to change my situation. It's when you feel like you're a powerless person. No one is, is purely powerless. We can always try to adjust something in our life. So it could be that this person seeing you as victorious over victim mentalities. Maybe they see that you could easily be a victim and you know, you've been a very victorious person in your life. You've been like, you know, screw victimhood. I'm not gonna be a victim, I'm gonna fight. Um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get what I want. I'm gonna go for the things I want and I'm gonna create that own life. The, again, this could be that this person though, as, as well, wants to figure out how to get out of victimhood themselves. This person um, may have a lot of dreams when it comes to you, a lot of a lot of potential, a lot of ideas about the future and the potential between the two of you, but they might be in victimhood mode because it might feel like maybe in some way for some of you, this person is attached to victim mentality. Vict um, you know, like where they're like, oh, I can't make something work. I can't do this. I'm not a good leader. Um, blah, 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 blah. So I think that's gonna probably resonate a bit differently with everyone. So keep that in mind. But yeah, I do see that this person is working with a little bit of a shadow um, side, but let's see. Tell me more about group number two's person's feelings towards them. Their feelings. We have magnificent, mag magnificence and love. Oh, beautiful, lilacs, oh, my favorite color. My, not my favorite color, but my favorite um, uh, flower, sorry. <laughs> I'm not actually the biggest fan. Ah, purple's all right. Anyway, lilac, love, magnificence. So again, I think this person definitely puts you on a bit of a pedestal. I think they do have idolistic ideas about you. They do find you to be um, very important, but they might feel like you are somehow acting and, and for some of you, like I said, this is going to go either way. Either they feel like you're being incapable of your potential, okay? Um, <laughs> or um, they themselves feel that way. For some of you, and for some of you, you might actually, I'm picking up that some of the, for some of you, this might be like a familial or platonic relationship as well. So that's interesting for some of you. It might be like familial or platonic, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, so group number two, how does their person feel? It's safe for you to love. Open your heart to give and receive the highest energy of all. And stay optimistic about your love life. So that's very interesting. Again, there's a sense of optimism, a sense of trying to find safety as well. I think this person's hoping that they wouldn't be hurt by you or uh, there might be that kind of dynamic here where they're a little bit afraid it's interesting, again, I we didn't get the most romantic cards as well, so I, I do have a feeling that some of you are asking about a platonic relationship. Um, but yeah, there's like, I feel like this person sees you as having a lot of potential in life, and they want you to trust that your magnificence in some way. I really do get that feeling here for some of you. Tell me more about this person's feelings towards group number two, the person that's on their heart and mind. What are their feelings? Mercury. So of course Mercury is connected towards Gemini and Virgo. And you know, rules the mind, communication, writing, thinking, education, like lower, like kind of technical training and so on and so forth. 
rules also like our extended relatives, aunts, cousins, associations that we have as well. So let me see here. I have a card that fell down, of course, because I can't just do one without it falling down. Oh yeah, there we go. Pluto. Mercury and Pluto. Interesting. Oh, okay. So Mercury, Pluto, that can be like quite harsh words. <laughs> uh, those are the people I'm afraid to fight with, actually. <laughs> the people that I'm afraid to fight with are people who have Pl Mercury, Pluto uh, things. I don't like fighting with them on a verbal level. Like they're mean. I'm not afraid to physically fight anyone because I'm an Aries, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't get scared of that. I'm more scared of like how they can be mean because <laughs> I've had a lot of experience with Mercury Pluto people and some of, on the on the negative side, holy shit, they can be awful. Um, they'll just say the worst, meanest things you ever heard in your life. They'll just tear you apart. But um, no, this is interesting because this is like transformative energy. It's so interesting too because Pluto can often make us feel guilty or like a victim in some way and this could be like somehow a perception that there needs to be a cleansing of this of this connection or again they might want to encourage you for transformation or encourage themselves um pluto can be a bit of a heavy influence because we feel um from pluto uh it's really ingrained as guilt or desire for power as well a desire for power of the of, of the word of, of what you say of your thoughts and stuff like that too powerful communication so this person could want to encourage you towards not falling victim I feel like Pluto is especially like myself I also have Pluto contacts in my chart with an opposition um, to my son uh, but sometimes it can feel like we're powerless and I feel like in some way this person, they might feel like you're, they want to encourage you not to be powerless. Again, it might be for themselves. I don't know. I can't quite put my finger on it here, guys. I'll just be honest because it's a general reading and I don't want to like assume too much. But there's definitely a desire to communicate something transformative here. Something about um, not being a victim. Taking control of yourself. Wow, moving forward. This might be about coming to good conclusions. This might be about the building of your future or your future together or your future individually as well. They might be a little bit cautious not to get hurt as well, especially if there were negative words in the past. I would say that they'd want to kind of talk this out though, certainly, if, if you have had some sort of difficult communication. For some of you, this could be creating a better future together moving past previous problems as well they might be expecting an apology for some of you as um, possibly but I would say this person cares about you again I'm kind of getting family vibes for some of you I have to say um, maybe there are arguments or something within the family I'm not sure ah, there's something about that that keeps kind of coming out to me I keep seeing family stuff possibly but anyway the point here is that I do think that this person they want to move past something. They want practicality. There's that three of swords, which can talk about a third influence here as well. So I feel like with that, it could come out in different ways. It could be that perhaps somebody else has hurt them before and caused them to kind of feel more like a victim. Wow. Sorry, the dogs are being loud. Um, you know, like made them... Uh, feel hurt and, and I, there's a good chance that there's been hurt feelings or they're afraid to hurt feelings there's something here about that for sure that I'm feeling so but see I wanted to say something else about Pluto sorry I turned off my camera for a moment so that the dog could get the barking out of his system because I didn't want you guys to have to hear that but I want to say something about Pluto Mercury and I actually wrote this down I swear to God um in my phone as a note because I have like a million notes that I like to to write down when I have like um ideas and I actually wrote something here about Pluto, the higher vi vibration of it. Manipulation that results in an exalted way of being. That would be the highest possible, because Pluto could be very manipulative. Um, it can manipulate us into finding ourselves to be a victim, as an example. It can, it can, it can, it can mess with our mind. And also Pluto Mercury on the very negative side could be a manipulative person 
right? It could be somebody who's prone to use manipulative tactics, maybe on a very subconscious level, um, without even realizing it. It might be because they, that's the way that they adapted in life, because that was the dynamic. That's how they got shit done in their life, or that's how they were able to kind of get their way. Most people are not assholes on purpose in life. They don't mean to do bad things to people. They are coming from what they know. And so I feel like this person, the thing about, and I was saying about Pluto Mercury, is that the highest vibration or the highest possible, manipulation is a beautiful thing if it's done correctly. We can manipulate art. Art is all manipulation. It's all, it's all a facade. It's all about how can I mix these colors and make something beautiful. And, and we can also encourage people um, with manipulation. We can say, you're amazing at that. You are intelligent. You are, you're amazing. And that's like a form of manipula a positive manipulation. It's about, manipulation to means to change the form of something. And we can do that in a positive way or we can do it in a negative way. And, and so that's interesting. I feel like this person, it's almost like they'd want to manipulate you or somehow manipulate the situation in order for the best. Like I do feel like this person has very good intentions. They care about you. They see magnificence in you and that sort of thing. That's what I want to say. That's what I want to say. Because that's what I feel like the highest vibration of, of Pluto um, could be the transformation. It's manipulation. It's but it's for the positive. It's for um, You know the higher purpose as an example Yeah, look at that. We have the hanged man and the three of, of pentacles and again this person might desire For you to shine a bit more or for you to be more open as an example. This could be about um, seeking higher education or learning or um, seeking potential that they feel like you're wasting or and vice versa it could come on this person's part where they feel like they're wasting potential where they are having a hard time maybe in some way you've encouraged them to kind of look past what they might think are their limitations in order to kind of create their real life like that they want or they desire so that's interesting I feel like this person they want to make shit happen with you <laughs> that's what I feel I feel like this is a person who really wants things to happen they want growth um, they want victory and they don't want to be like a victim to this situation or to this relationship in any way um, as well if they felt like they've been a victim to you or, or vice versa you've been a victim to them I don't think that they're into that idea um, you know, going forward. Now, sorry guys, I keep getting interrupted by the dogs and stuff. <laughs> so let me see. I want to ask here, uh, sorry for the little breaks and cuts here. It's just been, oh, heck, hectic here. So let's talk about their intentions towards you at this time. So this person, group number two, is asking about what are their intentions towards this, um, towards them? We have the Knight of Wands. The Ace of Cups. Wow, Ten of Cups. To create happiness. To act upon their best behavior in some way, I want to say. I, I don't know. I keep wanting to say that. I was just wanting to say that. I don't know why. Tell me more about their intentions inspiration begin now so this could be about creating something happy for the both of you beginning some sort of project burning with passion burning with life's passion oh that's so interesting wow it's it, what I find fascinating is like look at all these colors are so so similar aren't they it's like very fiery Inspiration, creativity, action. This is nice. This is positive. Whatever their intentions are, it's to create happiness with you. To create something with you. This could be about doing something together like a project or something like that. This could be about finding common ground. This is very nice, guys. I, I have to say, whatever they're planning or whatever they're intending is, is beautiful or it's... It's good. It's it's not negative. It's not spiteful. It's not hateful. It's positive. So I'm so curious as to how this is going to resonate. Group number two's person. Flirt. Make the effort. Yeah. And dang it. <laughs> and dang it. <laughs> That's the story of my life. Reckless shuffling. My specialty. 
Uh huh. Release your ex. So it's interesting because we have make the effort, release your ex. Now, I want to say something about release your ex. What I have here is a person I feel like who is willing to let go of the past in some way. And it doesn't have to be an ex person. It's about clearing previous energies. If there's been toxic behaviors between you guys in the past, this person wants to make a difference in their life. They want to make a difference in the connection. They want to have a lighthearted energy. They do want to make an effort here. Um, I feel like this person, whatever this is, is, is positive, especially to know if you guys have had previous problems, um, like, uh, like shadows in your relationships, arguments, difficulties. It's like, they want to go past that. They want to make effort towards you. They want to flirt. They want to move past any problems. So I feel like overall, that's a good message for you guys. Cause it's just indicating that they're moving forward in this connection with positivity. And their intention is to remain positive, to move past any negative energies and make effort towards you. So I think that's a really nice uh, indication that this relationship could move in a positive way through their actions because they want to take nice actions towards you. They want to take growing actions that kind of indicate, you know, letting go of any negative crap. And again, with the, even that going back to that Mercury Pluto thing that was showing up is it's like, positive transformation, positive manipulation. It's like they want to take the, you know, because like I said, poetry is an example, is a manipulation of words. We put the rhymes together, we manipulate them, but we can make something very beautiful, very heartfelt, very amazing. And I think this person is trying to figure out a better way to use their words. And it doesn't mean that they've been toxic to you in the past. It might be about releasing ideas that have worked for them in the past in other relationships. Um, do you know what I mean? Or defense mechanisms that they built up or whatever. But whatever, it doesn't matter. This relationship seems to be um, headed in a good direction because I feel like this person is desiring to create like a new sunrise with you or like I guess is, is how I would put it in a, in a very cheesy kind of way. Uh, and, and I would say that they are hoping to move forward very positively with you. So very nice. I hope that this reading was helpful. If you liked it, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I wish you all the very, very best of luck. Take care and I'll see you in the next reading. Hey guys, so if you chose group number three here with this witch's tarot deck and the Lepidolite, this is your reading. So let's get started and see. So what are your person's feelings about you right now? Energy check-in. So spirit guides, angels, ancestors, guide me in this reading for group number three. Those that are drawn to this particular group, what are their person's feelings about them? What kind of feelings does group number three's person have towards them? What kind of feelings do they have at this time? Oh, this is nice. What kind of feelings? So we've got the star and temperance. <laughs> the star, temperance, and the six of wands. Well, these are pretty positive, to be honest. I like this. The star, of course talk about idolization, trauma, healing, deep dive. So we have focus areas. Interesting. Po the focus areas cards coming up. So this could be, we have wellness, health, and self-care. So I do feel like this person in some way is invested in your wellness, uh, perhaps. So that could be interesting. Of course, that could be a sign that they also are invested in wellness and health and self-care in their own life in some way. So that could be reflective of the kind of actions that they partake in career-wise or in their life in general. Perhaps this is something that you guys connect on, but let's keep going. Clarify with the star. Their person's feelings. It's interesting because that card is about healing. Also, we have very like supportive feelings, uh, collaborative feelings, I do feel. Yeah, this is interesting. Queen of Cups and the Seven of Cups as well. Hmm. Trauma, healing, and deep dive. So if there has been trauma between you, I would say that, or anything that requires healing, that is something that they are feeling like they should do. This could be something that they're hoping to do with you. There might be some sort of feeling that one wants to understand more 
to overcome to be victorious here as well so it I think it's quite nice I would say that they might have a dreamy disposition towards you in some way I feel like this person feels very friendly towards you I can't say whether this is romantic or not based on these cards it doesn't feel overly romantic but it doesn't mean that there isn't it depends I would say that this person cares about you is invested in your well-being is what I can tell you this person feels invested in your well-being is what I want to say invested in your healing in your pro progression in life in your success that's the feeling I get here from this person that they're interested in seeing you succeed that they're interested in and they would want it to be together in some way like do I mean like so collaborative like they want to be uh, helpful towards you or kind towards you or something along those lines tell me more about group number three's person's feelings uh, uh, uh. stubborn cards there we go patience the tide will come in when it's ready so that's quite interesting about patience. It might be that this person isn't quick to make any moves or they've been rather patient with you perhaps or they're trying to remain patient somehow in this connection. Patience is coming up so if for instance you've been kind of difficult with them, they might be trying to remain patient, remain calm. They might be seeking patience within this connection in some way. We have rescue, help others in need or ask for assistance when you need it. It's interesting, um, there's a song rescue by darn it I can't think of what her name is but it's like I will send out an army to find you I will rescue you I, I those are the lyrics but I can't think of I want to say her name's Laura something but I can't remember it used to pop up on my shuffle I don't I'm not familiar with the artist at all actually um, have no clue of who she is but that particular song um, comes to my mind tell me more about this person's feelings Towards group number three. Chaos and conflict. Interesting. And never ending story. <laughs> and blessed. So that's interesting because with chaos and conflict and never ending story, of course, this could talk about never ending drama as an example. So if, if for instance, they are caught up in like, it could be that they feel like there's obstacles. It could be that they feel as if there's an uncertainty here as to whether things will go well or not. It could be that some rocky stuff has happened in your connection or in their life or your life or something like that. But I would say that they're positively aligned towards you. Like they look towards you wanting to create positive improvements in the connection, in the relationship they feel. And for some of you, it's like it might be that you've had like never-ending drama in your life. There's always something going on and they would want to help you with that or vice versa. Maybe you've helped them with that as well. Oh, we've got the hair popping out. Wait. Try it. Grab that card. There we go. We've got the hair showing up. So it's like a, a bunny. Let's see what it says. Rebirth, intuition, and balance. So it says here, it is the most adept of animals at shape-shifting. We can never be sure exactly where the hair is in this or the other world. It represents intuition, which makes things appear suddenly in our consciousness, like the lapwing eggs of Esther, Oster, Ostra, sorry, Ostara. I don't know how they say that. Okay, <laughs> I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I always mess those things up. I feel like such a dummy. Okay, anyway that magically appear in the hare's form. As representative of corn spirit and the two equinoxes, the hare brings the excitement of rebirth, fertile abundance, and a willing release as each creative cycle comes to an end. With the hare as your ally, you will be able to negotiate times of change, and you'll be able to draw upon your intuition to guide you through life. That's interesting. It represents dawn, brightness, and the east. The east is where, of course, the sun rises positive beginnings and we see that a lot here about potential beginnings time so that's very interesting because of the patience card because patience you know sometimes we need patience in order 
for something that works on a, an earth level. As an example, we have to be patient for the sunrise. We have to be patient for the sunset, as an example sometimes, uh, for nature to take its course. So it could be that this person somehow feels like patience is required. But I, I want to say that there definitely is a sense of this person being invested and hoping for positive change. We have separation. The time apart from your partner is on the horizon. So let's see here. Soulmate. Yes, this is your soulmate in separation. So they, for some of you, they might feel like you guys are soulmates in separation. Maybe, for instance, that's the problem. Um, that there's a separation here for some of you. Um, maybe they're trying to be patient with that in some way. Or maybe there's been separation in the past, but they realize that you know, you're very important to them as well. But it seems like this person has a very healthy outlook towards their feelings. Like they're trying to remain positive, patient in some way. Let's see here. Affection and happiness. So these are very sweet cards, I think, to get. Oops. Patience again comes out. So remaining patient. Let me ask. Actually, I might ask. Actually, why? Why is patience so prominent in this reading, in terms of their feelings? Why patience as such a prominent energy here? in terms of this person's feelings. Ooh, look at she's polishing things, the Eight of Pentacles. Good things come to those that wait. Perhaps, uh, you know, they're trying to be patient because there's already been a lot built and there's still so much more potential, I feel. Yeah. And they value it, I think, in some way, too. Yeah, <laughs> look at that Page of Pentacles came out in the sun. And the Eight of Pentacles. So yeah, I do feel like this person, they put a, a price on and a value on patients, on developments that are realistic. They like to go about things in the right way. I feel like, too, this person feels like it's valuable. Like, she's already kind of put a lot of work. She's shining it. She appreciates it. I think this person appreciates you in some way. And so they're willing to kind of take the chance, take the not the chance, uh, to take the risk to wait and to develop and that sort of thing. Like, there's a long-term energy here, guys. I don't feel like this is a person who's kind of, like, ha like half involved. I feel like they care. And oh, it, despite, like, if there especially is any difficulty between you, it's like they are hoping to get out of this energy. Although it could be that things are a little bit right now with the never-ending story that maybe it's not a yes or a no or they're unclear but they're still having the patience to kind of wait it and see what's going to develop I do feel uh, but that's the feeling here lots of I think potential still between the two of you and uh, all of that now in terms of their intentions I think it's time to look at that and see what kind of intentions this person has towards you that sort of thing. So let's check that out. So, some kind of dusty. Let's see. Group number three's person. What are their intentions? What are their intentions? Oh. <laughs> I love the lovers. I think that's one of my favorite lovers cards. What are the intentions? Well, we have the Nine of Cups, the lovers, and the and the Two of Wands. Um, interesting. Let's uh, continue a little bit here. What are their intentions? Passion. Children. That's interesting as well. And what are their intentions towards group number three? I definitely see positive intentions, nothing negative, with the Nine of Cups and the Lovers. Be in control of your own ship <laughs> and the ocean. Be beautiful, mysterious, wild, and free. That's interesting. That's <laughs> funny. Communicate. 
things left unsaid will never reach the shore. So this is interesting because I do feel like this person wants to communicate more with you. I feel like here, this person might be intending to take the lead here um, in terms of development. So we have children here. And of course this could indicate that your love life is affected by children as the card states, but it can also talk about beginnings, hope, innocence, creation, especially with the hair. So they might be uh, wanting to kind of take the lead in terms of creating some sort of new potentials. They might want to talk about the future a bit. They might, there's definitely communication coming here in alignment. So it, again, this might be a conversation that leads you both to understand what each other's needs are, desires, hopes, future type of stuff. I do think that there is a forward with thinking with this person towards you. And uh, I think you could expect this person perhaps to make a decision of some kind in the near future I'd like to say as well we have no place like home and happy happy as well so that's interesting because the nine of cups can talk about our personal happiness and fulfillment and I do feel like in some way this person is choosing whatever is going to make them the happiest here and the most comfortable but I have a good feeling that this is going to positively affect you as well it seems like they want to choose the happy option for both of you, I think. And I do feel like with No Place Like Home, this person might realize that you are their home. You know, that you are what feels comfortable to them. <laughs> There's the hair. Tune into the natural rhythm of life. And then we have new beginnings. Take a fresh look. That's beautiful. So we have a lot of uh, bunnies showing up here. Fertility. P possibility. So... I would like to say that creation with you and there's a naturalness to it I feel like in some way this person feels like you are home to them in some way that you feel comfortable to them that they are able to express themselves perhaps in a way that they are not able to with other people I feel like also this person feels like you might be the key to their happiness and they intend to communicate somehow in a way that would express this now it doesn't mean that they're gonna message you and say oh you're my dream my world my this my that um, but I think that they intend to kind of create happiness with you and to see in, and however that's realistic to the connection that you have and realistic to, you know, their personality, of course, you know what I mean? Not everyone's, um, verbally expressive. It could be through actions, you know what I mean? Like I'm going to come see you and then, you know, they'll show passion towards you or something like that. It, it depends, like obviously, but I think that tuning into that rhythm and new beginnings. So it's like they're taking it as it comes. Uh, a little bit, but I do see communication here, um, and, and it, it, it's, it's like sort of them taking a lead uh, as well. It might be that this person um, feels like they need to take a lead as well, as, because maybe if they don't, nothing's going to happen here, nothing's going to occur, or nothing will develop. Um, perhaps you, like for instance, if you as a viewer have already put a lot of effort here, it might be that you know, they're going to kind of meet your effort halfway, hopefully, as well. Uh, especially like I said if it's kind of up to them to take that lead and they know it um, and they're aware of it kind of like when you send a message out and you're like okay this is my feelings these are my feelings or whatever this is how I you know what I want you know what I need and then they are going to respond accordingly as an example because it might be like the balls in their court but uh, or they're going to kind of throw out something towards you that kind of puts a ball in your court but I feel like mutuality here so that's very positive I think going towards the future I think their intentions are heartfelt and kind nice supportive and uh, I like it so yay okay so that is what I'm seeing here for group number three hopefully this helps you and it resonates in some way I'm wishing you all the very very best take care and I'll see you in the next reading bye bye Hey guys, so if you chose group number four here with this tree lace agate, this is your reading. So let us find out the person on your mind. What are their feelings? What are their intentions? What's going on in this stinking world? We'll find it all out. So let's go ahead and get started. So group number four, those that are drawn to this group, what are their person's feelings for them at this time? them understand the truth of their situation in this person. So what are their person's feelings towards them? Mm. Exhausted a bit. Uncertain, I think. I think there's a lot of uncertainty here. They could feel um, effed over or upset. There might be hurt feelings in this connection. I'm getting 
<laughs> Let's see. What's going on? There's care, but there's conflict here. There has to be something going on with this one. There could be a guarded feeling, a desire to sort of guard oneself. They might feel that you're guarded at this time. There's two fives here, five of swords and five of wands, and it's telling me that there is some sort of difficulty, I would say. There has to be something that's getting in the way somehow, whether it's an argument between the two of you or a circumstance. I want to say that there has to be some sort of conflict in this connection. Hmm. I would say this person wants to reach out to you. They might be feeling like reaching out to you with the Ace of Cups and the Three of Wands. They might be uncertain, though, on how you would respond. This person might be afraid to reach out to you for some of you. How does this person feel? Codependency. And give your relationship a chance. That's interesting. Codependency and give your relationship a chance. So it could be that there have been codependent ideas expressed between the two of you, whether through actions or words or something like that as well. It might be that they felt like they can't live without you in some way, especially for those of you in separation. They might be feeling like they want to work on this, that they want to reach out. They might be afraid of the reception that they would receive if they did so, especially if you've had any difficulty. So that's going to be for some of you. Okay. Uh, as an example, I do feel like codependency, this might relate to different people differently, depending, um, by the way, uh, it's like this person doesn't want to give up on it is what I want to say. And I don't think that codependency might necessarily be the worst thing for some of you. It might be, like I said, depending on the connection, it might be a good thing that they kind of feel invested in some way. But for others of you, again, there might, be, there might be that. Um, as a more severe kind of, they might be really attached to you. <laughs> okay, we have Explore and Potential, and it actually came out like this, with the Potential first, and then Explore. It says, what powers and opportunities are waiting to be explored, activated, and manifested? What is the trajectory of expansion, and how will you choose to shine and grow? And then Exploring. So I think this person wants to explore the connection or the potential. So they're trying to kind of find their footing, I think this person might be investigating you a little bit because they're trying to find out if this is possible or real or if they could come back. There's something here, but I don't feel like this is all smooth and easy like the other ones. So what's up here with their feelings? We have guidance, find safety in your beacon's light. And then we've got, darn it, dream. Let me try to pick that up, it fell down. Okay, let's see. Dream, Falling, follow your yearning for the deep blue sea. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that's funny. I flipped that off on accident. Um, safety, don't be too proud to go back to shore. <laughs> so I wonder if there's pride here. Um, looking towards, mm, okay, so here's the thing. I think your person wants you, but they might be afraid of pride um, getting in the way. Uh, especially if there's been anything in the past this person might be kind of relying on pride a little bit too much, to be honest. Um, afraid to say sorry for some of you, perhaps, or... Hmm, this is interesting. Okay, so let's see. Tell me more about group number four person's feelings towards them. This is definitely not the... Um, let me pull that off. Remember how powerful you are. So that's the thing. I don't feel like this is the easier one. Um, like some of these other readings felt like kind of smooth and easy. This doesn't feel so. <laughs> we have impossible things. Working through disbelief, imaginative leaps and, leaps and fresh perspective. Remember how powerful you are. No need to fear. I get that song by Mariah Carey, You Can't Let Go. In my head, so I don't know if that might relate to some of you. Anything else here? 
You are rare and free. There are not many like you. Interesting. So, for some of you, this person might have realized that, especially for those of you in certain situations, I'm going to mention some things, and it may not resonate with all of you, so just don't hold on to it. But if this person kind of went out and explored the world, they might realize there, there's a uniqueness to you, that they feel safe with you, they feel good with you in some way, that the world's cruel and unkind and they can always just kind of come back to you for, and they feel like there's connection, it has potential. So that's the thing, I think it might resonate differently depending on everyone watching and what your connection is. For some of you, this person, it's like they need you in some way, or they realize that they need you, or for others of you, it's like they feel safety in the connection and they want to explore it because perhaps you provide them with some sort of feeling of power in some way that you lift them up in some way or that you, you give them self-confidence um either way though i think this person feels like they can't let go of it that they can't, they want to explore it there might be fear on some people's part that there could be getting hurt as well but i would say and this person may have a hard time being vulnerable in general. Like they might not be very good at vulnerability, actually, with this person. They might not be good at saying what's really on their heart, mind, that sort of thing. I think that their self-expression isn't always the strongest. But they're loyal. And they show it, perhaps, in different ways. We have thinker and loyal heart. And that's interesting. I think this person thinks a lot about how to express things and I think in their in their in their in their brains and their dreams and their in their fantasies they're like very open they say all the right things but I think this person often doesn't say the right things in reality it's all in their head <laughs> like where they have like a dream life like where everything's perfect this person might even say all the wrong things actually um, or they might feel like they say all the wrong things. But here, I feel like this person, they do feel very connected to you. They do very much care about you, love you, admire you, appreciate you, that sort of thing. I think this person is very loyal, even if they don't always know how to express that. Um, this person, like that loyal heart and codependency, like they care. They're attached already to you. And uh, you're definitely unique in their mind. I, I feel that for sure. I definitely see that unique... Um, and they think a lot. This person is a thinker. I think that they might have a lot of air or a very reflective nature. Maybe it's like Mercury Moon or something like that or Mercury involved with the personal um, planets. It's like where they think a lot. That sort of thing. Like maybe Mercury Sun or Mercury Moon, like I said, or Mercury something. I get that vibe. But yeah, essentially... This person could be reflecting on things that have been said too, or things that they've said that aren't, weren't right, <laughs> or not phrased correctly. But I, I, I want to say this person cares a lot about you, and that's that's the main factor. But I just feel like there might be certain issues here. What are their person's intentions towards them? What are these person's intentions? Their current intentions. Well, this is nice. <laughs> what the heck? Six of Swords, the King of Cups, and the Lovers. To open up about insecurities, perhaps. Oh. Well, jeez, guys. I hope this is true for a lot of you because this is good intentions. Um... We have the Six of Swords and the Ace of Swords, and we have Aces, so these are beginnings, and these are initiations. These are these are indications that this person will act upon something, that they're going to start something. With the Ace of Wands and the Lovers, they could try to seduce you as an example, or you know, come together to create a romantic relationship or a partnership of some kind. Now, with the King of Cups and the Five of Pentacles, of course, this could indicate that they might open up to you about insecurities. They might be honest about how bad they feel without you, as an example. Um, they may, it's, it makes me inclined to think that this person might act on passion. So wherever they've been held back by pride, as an example, pride that pride might go out the window type of deal. So it might be the thing where they kind of drop their defenses and they open up about insecurities uh, in, in, a, in a meaningful way to them, you know, according to them. Engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. So again, this could be about them committing towards you and getting to know each other. 
I'm not going to take these other two. So that's so interesting, getting to know each other. And it says here, as you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. So this is like the deepening of the bond. It's like their intention is to create a deeper bond with you, to get to know you, to open up to you. And here we have engagement. It's like deepening the connection. So I don't feel like this person's skipping out anywhere or that they're leaving your life or anything like that. Um, if anything, I feel that this person is creating that bond uh, that even deeper, perhaps, to be honest. So yeah, that's interesting. Tell me more about this person's intentions. What are their intentions? Lake. Depth. Wow. Oh, that's so pretty. That card. And East. Beginnings. Depth and beginnings coming out. Th 31 and 3. Wow. That's so interesting. We have the idea of beginning something. Because East is where, of course, the sun rises. So... This could be bringing honesty to something, shining a light on something, beginning something with you. That is, I think this person's going to share something with you, uh, actually. They intend to share some sort of insecurity feeling. They're going to be vulnerable, I think, this person. Whoever this person is, I feel like there's some sort of vulnerability that's going to be coming in at some point in the future. I won't say when for you guys, but I want to say that they could express vulnerability to you. Oh, son of a... That was a bad thing. What just happened? I'm going to have to clean that up. Oh, well. You have Toni Morrison power. And chicken. Oops. Wildflowers. So, this is... These are interesting cards to come out because chicken actually in this deck relates to the past or lore or deep roots. And then we have Jamaica Kincaid showing up, which talks about history as well. And that's funny because it talks about Jamaica Kincaid. It's, it talks about lineage, the past, deep time. And then we have as well Toni Morrison showing power and uh, which is about owning power, seizing power, and the powers that play. And then we have wildflowers, which wildflowers is all about um, renewal, romance, and awakening. So I have a good feeling that for a lot of you, this person, their intention is to open up to you about something deep within their own history. Um, I feel like this person might open, own up to something or talk about something. Again, for those of you that maybe have a deep connection with this person or a history with this person, they're honoring it. They want to renew it because of this history, because of what's occurred between you. So if you have like a long drawn out story with this person, it seems like with depth and beginnings, it's like they want to, they want to create more. Like they don't want to let go of it. They want to continue the legacy as an example. Um, for others of you, like I said, that have a newer connection, this is going to probably indicate that this person is keen on um, sharing something with you that's very deep. Um, so it, maybe it's a deep insecurity or it's a deep story to them that means something. There could be some sort of relation there that they're going to they're gonna relate something to you that's important to them. That's uh, So keep your ears open for that as well because it might be a way to really connect to them emotionally, especially for those of you trying to get to know someone. Keep your ears open for admissions of admissions of like the past or feelings or insecurities because it might be a really good time for you to kind of connect to them, especially for newer connections. But yeah, that's what I'm seeing for those of you that chose group number four. I really hope that this reading was helpful and insightful. I wish you the very, very best and take care of yourselves, guys. And I will um, send you with lots of love and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.